Detroit, get ready. It's a night of empowerment with the one, the, one, the, only, the only, Bishop T.D. Jakes. If you just want to wander around, this is not the conference for you to go to. This is for people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you're ready to possess the promises of God. Somebody holler, that's me! You're invited to this life-changing session. Come and get the tools you need to maximize your potential. Hello, I'm Bishop T.D. Jakes, and I'm so excited about joining Bishop Charles Ellis. This is a conference you will not want to miss. If you know you're ready to do more, deserve more, and have more, this session is for you. My prayer is that this meeting will push you over the edge. Bishop Jakes is coming to Detroit, and he wants to see you. Registration for this session is only $39, and spots are going fast. Log on to greatergrace.org and secure your spot today. different people what they're looking for in a church they probably give you a hundred different answers a life-changing word an anointed music ministry a place of genuine love care and support a multiplicity of programs and outreaches that extend beyond the walls of the church most people will look for a church with a strong foundation yet is open and receptive to 21st century ministry applications and methodologies that's our vision and our mission here at greater grace temple the city of david I'm Bishop Charles H. Ellis III, Senior Pastor, and Amazing Grace starts right now. Welcome to today's telecast of Amazing Grace, and there is a word from the Lord specifically for you. But don't be selfish with it. God's word is for more than just one person. Call a neighbor and a friend, let them know that Bishop Ellis is on the air. Now let's go into the service already in progress where you're going to be blessed by this anointed word. 
speaks to us about getting ourselves together it don't talk about that folk and that folk and him and them and mama and daddy and sister and brother and what everybody did and what somebody didn't do it talks about you getting your flesh together because if we could ever discipline our flesh then we would be way down the road is there anybody in here that will not stop will quit playing the blame game and quit trying to assign your failures among somebody else well if it hadn't been for them I would have been down the road well if they hadn't have done that well if he had done what he said he's gonna do I would have been let me tell you something you can't control nobody else but you can't control yourself is there anybody that will take dominion over yourself Well, the Lord put me here. Bishop, you said last week that the Lord put me here to subdue. You told me last week that the Lord put me here to take dominion. I know that what you said, Bishop, because you said it come from the root word dominate. And that's what I said. But the first thing you got to dominate is yourself. The first thing you got to subdue is yourself. Can you subdue your mind? Can you subdue your thoughts? Can you subdue your speech? Can you subdue your flesh? Can you dominate your will and let it acquiesce to God's will? Tell that neighbor, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. So now he says, if it dwell in us, then it shall quicken our mortal bodies. I love when uh, uh, the old saints used to talk about having a quickening. Julius, they used to talk about a quickening. What's that, mother? I got a quickening. In other words, uh, every now and then, your head would check or hand would go up. Hey, Amen. And what mama was saying, got a quickening. And, 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 and that quickening just came to remind you that there's something on the inside of you. We ain't talking about no Tourette syndrome. Hello, somebody. We talking about a quickening of the spirit. And every now and then, the spirit will let you know, I'm down inside of you. When you're trying to do something, the spirit will come and quicken you. When you're trying to go down the wrong road, it'll quicken you. When you get ready to say the wrong thing, it'll quicken you. When you get ready to cuss somebody out, it'll quicken you and let you know, I, 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 you better than that. I, 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 you don't do what you used to do. Is there anybody that thank God? for a quickening. It'll quicken your mortal body. Verse number 12. He says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Somebody, tell your neighbor. Tell them, say, you don't owe your flesh nothing. You, 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 don't, you don't owe your flesh nothing. Uh, listen, our flesh is paid in full. I can look at you. you, you, you your flesh is paid. You, 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 you don't overpay your flesh. You need a refund. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You didn't overpay your flesh with food. You didn't overpay your flesh with clothes. You didn't overpay your flesh with everything. You have spent all your life catering to the flesh as if you owe your flesh something. Tell that neighbor, you better get the priorities together. You better tell that flesh, take the back seat. Let the spirit have the front seat. You better tell your flesh, you better get on the top shelf and let the flesh get right down here where I can, and spirit get down here where I can reach it. Is there anybody that will Flip this thing and put your priorities back together and start catering to the spirit and not to the flesh. He says, we are no longer debtors to the flesh, to live after the flesh. But now we can live after the spirit. We can live after the spirit. But living after the spirit will cause you to be misunderstood because you're not speaking where you are. And when you are not speaking where you are, everybody cannot handle you. Oh, I wish I were. Is there anybody in here, as long as you didn't have no dreams, as long as you didn't have no goals, as long as you wasn't trying to do nothing, you wasn't trying to be nothing, you had everybody that was all right with you. But the minute you start talking 
different. The minute you start talking about doing something and climbing out of some ruts, and the minute you start talking about being something that they didn't think you could be, that they didn't even know was on your mind, they started having problems with you and start calling you, oh, you think you better than somebody. I'm better than where I am. Is there anybody in here that will look at yourself and say, no, God didn't make me to be doing what I'm doing. God didn't make me to be where I'm in. It's time to step up a little bit higher. It's time to climb up a little bit higher. Is there anybody in here that will start reaching and stretching and pressing? Somebody shout greater, 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 greater. What is that song? Uh, greater is coming. Uh, who sings that, Tim? What was her name? Jacqueline Carr, greater is coming. I love that song. Greater is coming. But sometimes we think greater can come while we still where we are. Help me out, somebody. If greater is coming, then you ought to be expecting it. And if you are expecting it, you ought to be reaching up to grab it. Is there anybody in here that if somebody is reaching down to lift you up, I'm not going to keep my hands down. I'm going to reach my hands up. And somebody ought to be standing on some chairs. Somebody ought to be standing on a ladder trying to get to the highest point so that when greater comes, it can pull and lift you out of where you are. Tell that neighbor, you don't owe the flesh nothing. You are not debtors of the flesh to live after the flesh. He says, why? Because if you live after the flesh, you shall what? Die. I said, neighbor, you trying to die? Are you trying to get up out of here? He said, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. And he said uh, that when you, that, but, but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, ye shall live. Now, God did what he was supposed to do. When we found ourselves in a mess, found ourselves in a pickle, he put him, he wrapped himself in flesh and came and died for you and I. Is that right? And he died on Calvary's cross. Is that right? He ain't going to die again. He's not coming to get on another cross. I don't care how bad your life is. I don't care what you find yourself in. I don't care what you get entangled in, what you get uh, 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 wrapped up in. He's not coming to die again. There is not another cross for Christ. He has died on the only cross that he's ever going to die on. And now you got to die on some stuff. Now you got to crucify your flesh. You got to crucify some thoughts. You got to crucify some actions. You got to crucify some lifestyle. Is there anybody in here that will take your mind to Calvary? Anybody in here that will take your deeds to Calvary? Anybody in here that will take your thoughts to Calvary? Take your speech to Calvary? It's not about crucifying Christ. He's already been crucified. Now we've got to crucify our flesh. Am I helping somebody up in here? Amen. I'm almost done. Somebody say, hurry up, Bishop. You got to mortify the deeds of your flesh. And here we go. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How do you know that you are a son of God? Because you are led by the Spirit of God. Coming up, we lived on 4030 West Outer Drive. It was a most wonderful house on 4030 West Outer Drive. When I'm riding down Outer Drive, and get close to Wyoming. I look at that house. And sometimes I want to go and knock on the door. Or ring the bell just to go in. And to see 4030 West Outer Drive. Because we had some great times, Teresa. At 4030 West Outer Drive. That's where her name wasn't Teresa. It was Scrappy. That's where Scrappy grew up. At 4030 West Outer Drive. That's where Chucky grew up 
at 4030 West Outer Drive. Now, next door was 4010, I believe, West Outer Drive, or 4020. And the Watts lived there, W-A-T-T-S. And the Watts were some wonderful people. The Watts had a wonderful house. They had a functioning family. And the Watts, amen, we were so close to their kids until their home was our home. And our home was their home. And we could go over to the Watts house. They had an in-ground swimming pool, nine feet deep. And we swam over there every Every single day in the summer. We could swim there even when they were not home. That's how close we were. When I spent all my days at the Watts house, uh, I was able to go into the cabinet, get a cup. Didn't have to ask nobody. Miss Watts, can I have something to drink? Boy, you know you at home. Stop asking me. Go and get what you need. I could open up the refrigerator and I could pour Kool-Aid and milk and I could go in the cookie jar and get cookies. I didn't even have to ask the Watts because we lived next door for over 10 years and we were just like family and we had those privileges at their house and they had privileges at our house but at the end of the day it doesn't matter how much they let me do and allowed me to do they were not my parents I was not led by Mr. and Mrs. Watts I was led by David and Wilma Ellis so how do you know whose son I am when he going in both refrigerators how do you know whose son I am I am when I'm going in both refrigerators and getting bologna and putting it in the skillet where he looked like he home here but it's not a matter of where he is watch who he's led by when David Ellis said come home I went right on home I didn't say who you talking to and when David Ellis said you couldn't go I couldn't go so God is saying for as many as are led by the spirit of Christ they are the sons of God is there anybody in here that you ain't just talking about being say you ain't just wearing jewelry and crosses but you are being led by the spirit of God does he lead you in your walk lead you in your talk lead you in your action for as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God ask that neighbor who's leading you come on ask that neighbor who's leading you Come on, ask them, who led you yesterday? Who led you last week? Who led you last night? Who led you this morning? When it's snowing, you stay in bed. Who's leading you? When it's raining like cats and dogs and you stay home, put the cover over your head, who's leading you? When you just try to know you ought to be there, but you ain't there, who's leading you? Well, I'm saving. God knows my heart. He know your heart is wicked as can be. When you are led by the Spirit of God, then you are the Son. We know you by whose Let me close out this last verse number 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of what's that word adoption whereby we cry what's that Abba father or Papa 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 is a term of in What's going on, Pops? I call folk Pops that are not my father. It's a term of endearment. Most of the bishops on the board are much older than me. And some of them I address, how you doing, Pops? Not being disrespectful. It's a term of endearment. And he said, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, or Papa, Papa. What is he saying here? He's saying that God did not adopt us to bind us. God didn't adopt us to restrict us. He said whoever the son is set free Y'all better say it up in here. He is free indeed. 
Oh, he free for real. Ain't nobody playing. So he didn't adopt us to restrict us or to bind us, but he adopted us that we might have a father. Not just a father, but the ultimate father. Because, yeah, sometimes it looked like you got cheated in the fatherhood department. Sometimes it looked like it didn't measure up in the fatherhood department. Sometimes you were looking next door and around the corner and it just reminded you of what you didn't have or reminded you of what you wish you would have. But now God is saying, I'm giving you a second chance. Why? Because I'm the God of a second chance. And I'm giving you a chance now to have everything that you didn't have and to get everything that you didn't get and to have somebody on your side that you never ever had on your side. Those of you that think you had the greatest daddy in the world, Wait till I adopt you. And those of you that didn't have nobody looking out for you, wait until you get into my family. Is there anybody that thank God that he thought enough of you to adopt you? Let me say this and I'm closing up. He didn't bring us in foster care and I thank God for foster care. My parents, amen, were foster care parents and I thank God for them. But in foster care, sometimes uh, people are tolerating kids because they don't love kids but they need that check. Are y'all here? what I'm saying. That check helps to make ends meet. But when you move from foster care to adoption ain't no check coming. You got to show enough love that kid. Come good, come bad. You got to love that kid. And God looked beyond our faults and he saw our needs and while we were sinners he died for us and said I'm going to adopt you and my family. I'm going to give you an inheritance. I'm going to give you my name and is there anybody in here that thank God you had a raggedy father now you got the best father you had a father who wouldn't cover you now you got a father who covers you you had a father who wouldn't provide nothing and now you got one who supplies all your needs you had one that wasn't with you when you were sick now you got one that healed all of your diseases is there anybody that thank God for being an ultimate father somebody shout glory in here come on shout glory in here Everybody stand. Tell that neighbor he adopted you because he loved you. He adopted you because he loves you. He adopted you. Not to dominate you. Can we all be clear that if God wanted to dominate us, he absolutely could dominate us. Can we be clear that if God wanted to dominate us, he could absolutely dominate us. He could fix it so we couldn't do anything that he didn't want us to do. But he didn't adopt us to dominate us. He adopted us to love. And he's not making any differentiation. It was so uh, uh, apropos that on uh, Friday, laughing with the bishop, one of the comedians, he says, why do we feel we need to explain to folk, even folk we don't know? He said, you at McDonald's, hoarding food. Somebody look at you and say, uh, 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 are those your two kids? Uh, well, 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 this one is mine and my wife together, but but this one is hers and my step. He said, you explaining stuff to folk you don't even know. Just, just, just order number two and say, yeah, they mine. Aren't you glad God don't be differentiating? Yeah, he mine, but, 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 but he ain't really mine. He, aren't you glad that he adopted us? And he says, we can call him Papa. Not just father, but papa. A term of endearment. Brothers and sisters, you have the ultimate father. On this Father's Day, I don't know what kind of emotions it brings. But know, all that you didn't get, 
God says, I'll give it to you. All that you didn't receive, he's saying, I'll provide it for you. All that you didn't know, he says, ask me for wisdom. I'll give it to you freely. Join hands with that name. Beloved, I pray that you were blessed by that word that I brought. I wish I could have brought you the entirety of the message, but we only have a half hour space to air this service. I certainly pray that you will call the telephone number that is on your screen. You can order this service in its entirety with music ministry. I know that it will bless you not only today, but in days to come. Call that telephone number and let our courteous operators even accommodate your request as best they can for a very nominal fee. Let's pray now the prayer of faith. Lord, we pray that you will give us the endurance Keep on walking by faith and to be students of your will and your word that we might be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Listen, I've got some prayer counselors standing by the phone lines. Call now and get some help in your time of need. God is just a prayer away. Well, listen, I've got to go. My time is up, but always know that we love you and we're praying for you right here from the city of David. Be blessed. Detroit, get ready. It's a night of empowerment with the one, the, one, the, only, the only, Bishop T.D. Jakes. If you just want to wander around, this is not the conference for you to go to. This is for people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you're ready to possess the promises of God. Somebody holler, that's me! You're invited to this life-changing session. Come and get the tools you need to maximize your potential. Hello, I'm Bishop T.D. Jakes, and I'm so excited about joining Bishop Charles Ellis. This is a conference you will not want to miss. If you know you're ready to do more, deserve more, and have more, this session is for you. My prayer is that this meeting will push you over the edge. Bishop Jakes is coming to Detroit, and he wants to see you. Registration for this session is only $39, and spots are going fast. Log on to greatergrace.org and secure your spot today. Hello, I'm First Lady Chrisette Ellis, and yes, it's that time again, Boot Camp 5. I love boot camp because it's a time when we as women gather to be empowered so that we can be all that God has created us to be. Coming this year to Boot Camp 5 is Dr. Carolyn Showell, Evangelist Sandra Riley, Dr. Jean Porter King, Evangelist Barbara Golder, and guest psalmist Tasha Page Lockhart. This year, our theme is calling forth the ministry within. Stir up the gift. Join me October 9th through the 12th right here at Greater Grace Temple. Come on, it's time for you to stir up your gift. We pray that you were blessed by this edition of the Amazing Grace Telecast. To help us further our vision, give us a call or visit us on the web at greatergrace.org. Our ability to spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world is made possible by the support and generous contributions of our partners.